G'day guys, just flicking up a video of my Toyota 80 Series Land Cruiser petrol turbo. Um, it's a 1996. When I first brought it about 10 years ago now, uh, it was completely bog stock. It was a mum's car. And over the years I've done heaps of modifications to it. And um, it's taken me th through halfway across Australia. Um, been super reliable and I figured I'd just take a bit of time to show you guys what I've done to it. And uh, yeah, we'll kick it off. We'll start with the bull bar. It's just a cheap Chinese wholesale import. Um, I think I paid about $450 for it. Um, it's, it's been super good. There's, I can't fold it. Nothing's rattled off, nothing's cracked. Um, the, the powder coat's just gotten a bit faded over time, but you're gonna expect that. Um, on the front, it's just a set of seven inch Titan uh, driving lights. LED light bar, which I've just sort of stuck underneath there. Um, just a king's winch. Don't need anything special, barely, barely use it really. Flip up uh, license plate bracket. Um, the two antennas I got are GME. That's for um, my Selfie and that's for my UHF. The side steps and scrub rails, I'm pretty sure they're a TJM. Um, they're quite wide, so that's why I like them. And then what I've done is underneath here, I've welded in another support. So this bar here, um, welded all that in and made it sort of a bit stronger so that way we're technically a rock slider as well. Um, yeah, they, I think I got these for about 350 bucks from um, 80 series cruiser parts online, just second hand, but they've been really good. Um, the bonnet, the bonnet's a 79 series bonnet that, um, and I brought an 80, another 80 series one and sort of got a panel beater to remove the skins and fabricate it, weld it in and bog it in. Um, I've put some stickers on it just to make the thing pop. Been quite, uh, I like the look of it. It's in terms of reliability, I'm starting to get a few cracks now. It's sort of been about five years. I'll have to just sort of try and redo it a little bit, but it's not super best fit if you're really sort of anal about it. But um, look, if you, if you stand back, it looks all right and that'll look, be good enough for me. Safari snorkel, been really good, hasn't faded, um, super tight. Um, the roof, oh one thing I have done is I've got like a little cartridge thing that I brought off air on board. They've got um, like a little um, sort of filter that you can put in there and you just sort of slide in and um, just to help stop the dust from getting into me uh, main air box. So that's quite good. Cheap light bar on the top, uh, cheap awning on the side. The roof rack's nothing special, it's just a Chinese one. Um, your King shower tent, that's only just a recent addition for the camping trip that's coming up. Um, that's the solar panel I've done a separate um, video on. It's on a, on a slide and it does sort of slide out past just on top of the, uh, the wagon boot lid, if you will. Um, that's been really awesome. There's a separate video on that, go check it out. The ladder, I had a friend of mine make this for me. Again, hugs the body pretty tight. Uh, it's He's put smaller tube in here, so that way it gives a nice little flush sort of look. Uh, at the top, just on some like, like D-shackle type things. Um, I don't know if you can see that in there. Um, when I go off-road, I just loosen these off a little bit just to help give it a little bit more flex. And, um, and they, some sort of just like an EH sort of cheap little mount that I've engine mount there. So it's like a bit of rubber with two studs either side of it, just to help give it that bit of flex. Uh, obviously the body and stuff moves when you're driving. And I've just bolted it straight into the rear bar. Uh, rear bar, same thing, just a Chinese wholesale one. And I've just put a, um, some nicer LED lights on it. 12 pin, uh, yeah, camera lead for me camper trailer. Uh, Anderson plug, a tap for um, my water tank, 
which I'll show you in a second. Uh, same thing, had a mate make me this. Um, just the tra Max Trax holder or treads. Just that way they're out of the way and I can they're quickly accessible. I don't like putting them in the car because they're usually covered in mud and I've usually got swags and gazebos and stuff mounted on top. So this was a um, really good idea. UV, like the sun damages them a fair bit. As you can see, they're starting to get a bit faded and starting to get a bit cracked. These are probably, I don't know, seven years old. So, and they, they're still, they're still all right. Um, the, oh, this side I've got camera and two reverse lights just on a pole here. I've had both of these when I did the PDR road. I had some um, crack welds and stuff that I've sort of got to fix. Uh, PDR road just rattled everything to pieces, like it just snapped all these and um, just a bit of run and, run and maintenance when I was up in uh, in Cairns but, and when I got back. But um, otherwise, rear bars held up. It's been super strong. Can't really sort of complain. Uh, this is the Hurricane Fabrication, one of their original tailgate storage mods. Um, I've carpeted the inside of mine, so I gutted more of it out and put carpet that way I can store all some bit bigger stuff. All my recovery gear, tire deflators, straps, spare belts, that sort of all just lives in here. Highly recommend Hurricane Fabrications. Um, this has been awesome. Does add a bit extra weight to the um, to the tailgate, but who cares? Uh, Titan drawers, just your full drive super center ones. And then I've put it, I've had a cargo barrier in here, and then got these made, just so that way I can chuck a set of jumper leads, my coat, and um, I've chucked boxes in here and then strap them. Um, this side I've just got all like awning walls. Um, spares, hoses, that sort of stuff I sort of tuck in here. Underneath this wing, so you can still access this, uh, underneath here is an air tank, and that just runs me air fitting, an air pressure gauge. It's my water tank gauge, so at the moment I've still got 39 litres left in the tank. Um, solar reg, which when I was I did Nolan's Brook Crossing, when I did that I got a bit of water damage here. I've been and done Crook River, Crooked River, quite a few river crossings, and uh, I've never had water come in and damage this. It was only Nolan's Brook, and I sat in Nolan's Brook crossing for probably a minute and a half trying to get snap strapped out of it. So I think that's where the water can't, water damage just sitting in there for that long had just hit the screen to about here. So these are relatively cheap. These only cost me like 70 bucks. So I just haven't bothered to replace it, but. As you can see, the screen's a bit dicky. It's on the list, I'll change it one day. Um, this side, this is just my 240 volt outlet. Um, it runs through the inverter, which is sort of up there. All your USBs, SIG sockets, that sort of stuff to charge my phones and uh, laptop. Uh, water pump switch. As you can see, the water pump's just mounted on the cargo barrier there. Um, yeah, tap in one of these drawers. I've just got a um, garden hose and um, just a coiled up like wash down hose. That just plugs onto the end of there and then you can hose off your whatever you've got to hose off and clean your dishes, that sort of stuff. The other one's just a light for me. Um, interior lights if you will so it's on with the door off or on full time um, as you can see just nice little slim lights uh, that's me another little charging dock that I did underneath here is me compressor uh, same thing tire lever and um, yeah jack and all that sort of stuff still live in here first aid lives in here um, that's sort of the back of that. This is uh, the 80 series one. This is just another Universal King straw that I've brought and just chucked in and just made it work. But I think it all looks pretty tidy. Uh, 
King's stuff isn't the best quality. Um, having said that, this has been in the car for over five years. It's been wet. It's It's been... I haven't given it any maintenance or any love. The only things I, that are starting to get a bit sagged are these wings. They're getting just a little bit damaged and some of the carpets are starting to come up. Um, but realistically for the price, I can't complain. They've been really, really good. Some people find with the new ones, they do rattle a little bit. Um, mine sort of seem not to, which is good. You do have to slam in pretty hard though, otherwise, when you do close all this up and you go down the street, it can come out, so you do have to slam them shut. But uh, Antenna mount. This, I uh, had another friend of mine make for me. I sort of copied a bit of a design on online. This holds my CFA antenna. This one's my FMAM antenna for the radio. And I've just sort of, just sort of got a uh, hot solder on iron just to poke in the hole and just go through a rubber grommet on both sides. Uh, what else do we go to? Just little nice little side lights. Under me uh, awning there. Now the back seats, I've taken the back seats out. I've got a pretty large dog and um, yeah, just wanted to make it a little bit more comfortable for him. When he's in there, I chuck a big doona in there and he can have a proper lie down and a, and a sleep. It's also super handy when I am going off road. I can throw boxes in, all my clothes, all that sort of stuff. Same thing, strap it down, put it up tight. Um, it also, behind here is my water tank, which you all sort of roughly see. So that's my fill point, and I've just run it through a one-way valve, so that way it can suck air, but not um, water can't come back out. So that way it doesn't sort of you know, compress the tank at all. Um, water pump, just mounted that there, and use Ozpex. Another plumber mate of mine sort of did all this. Inverter, um, just another bag just to hold stuff on. But yeah, it's and all I've done to hold the water tank in is just basically use all thread and um, and washers and fish plates and just sort of bolted it to the cargo barrier. Water tank lives up underneath there. It's a 45 litre, a 42 litre, sorry, Boab water tank. Um, and it just sort of sandwiches in there. Still have enough room, fire extinguishers either side. Still have enough room, my self eyes mounted in there, if you can sort of see that, I don't think you can, but my self eyes in there. When I do go away, I usually put my shotgun in there and um, and load all my clothes and boxes and stuff in. MSA, um, seat organizers, super handy. I just keep like maps and um, stubby holders, hand sanitizer, bog roll, that sort of stuff in there. I'll get to this in a minute, but this is my center console fridge. Built this around the box, and I've got another couple of SIG sockets and USB in there to charge phones and run extra fridges in here if I need to. Um, XR6 Falcon seats um, with Hurricane Fabrication seat covers. XR6 seat mod, highly recommend it, really good. That's my center console fridge. Now to make the box, all I did was basically cut the original one straight down. Um, I don't know, about sort of 10 mil just behind this little square here. Cut it straight down and then made a wooden box just for this just to live into and then hardwired it in. Um, holds 11, that's 11 litre. I, I find I can't leave this on all the time. Um, for whatever reason, it, it does drain the battery a fair amount quicker than, um, say, a normal bigger fridge, if that makes sense. They just do draw, draw a lot. And they don't like staying on. If I leave it on, sometimes it just goes into a, some sort of code. Um, I'm, I haven't really ventured in to find out why, but it just starts logging a code and then just it doesn't cool anymore. It just stays where it is. Um, but while I'm driving, it's it's perfect. So um, yeah, if you're just using it for a day or two, it's good. But don't rely on it for like a week plus because it it just drains too quick. Um, voltmeters. These are just for like essentially four dollar eBay jobbies. Um, auxiliary in main. 
they've worked faultlessly and they're accurate too which is weird for cheap Chinese um, left hand side light switch so that activates them um, more charging USBs and SIG sockets and stuff um, my CFA radio so this is just a one of those unit and bear cat things or whatever they call them um, when I go out on site I can listen in to what is happening so what event um, they contact Firecom and that sort of stuff and I can listen to what's happening before I get to the station self I um, internal antenna my tablets mounted via a ram mount seat um, bolt attachment and I run all my like HEMA maps and um, I think it's Aussie Explorer and a few other bits and pieces off this all my music runs off this and then Bluetooth to my radio turbo timer uh, obviously I've, I've got a turbo but even before that I put it in there because when I was um, going on farm shooting a lot I'd used to take my keys out to go and unlock and I'd be constantly stop starting the car so I put this in I brought it for 40 bucks and that way I can take the keys out go open the gate come back in and continue driving without constantly stop starting the car phone cradle is a strike alpha uh, phone cradle they're supposed to be a phone booster. They're not. They're pretty ordinary in my opinion. But the cradle's really good. Uh, I'll go around to the other side of the car. Ah, oh, these. Had another mate make me up um, these brackets. Just same thing, just cheap little lights. They're on either side of the, the mirror. I put these here because my tint's so dark. Going around corners or driving into ruts at night, I can see what's going on. Like it just lights up sort of, if you can imagine this sort of area. Um, the area that you're going to be driving into. If, you, if you're off-road at night, you'll know what I mean. Um, so yeah, just another cheap little mod that I've done. Uh, all my switches are in here. Taken out one of the vents and just blocked it off underneath. Just to house more switches. All my gauges. Uh, so I've got trans temp, boost, and um, exhaust temp gauges. Uh, yeah, better view of my tablet. That's sort of about it in there. Um, up here I've cut in two more switches into the factory um, centre roof console thing. And this is one that I made. Well, made and then a cabinet maker sort of made it better than me. And, um, and then I got it all like vinyl wrapped put this sort of stuff in here that way I can keep sort of more sunnies up there and um, maps that sort of stuff um, put me interior lights on there as you can sort of see so this is just sort of like a I roughly made this up it took me a couple of hours and then um, then yeah cabinet maker mate sort of did it better same thing more USBs SIG socket um, VHF scanner so that's me CFA radio I can turn this on and it operates through that speaker behind there um, and then yeah just interior lights so same thing on with door off or on all the time um, so yeah and I think that come up pretty pretty neat what else have I got in this oh me shouldn't be telling you guys this but uh, this here is my car immobilizer override essentially so it's just a switch that I've put in the um, XR6 seat spot and it links in with the horn and yeah so you um, flick that on and if someone was to try and tamper with it it activates the horn um, or if it's back the other way you can start the car as per normal uh, Tow Pro Elite just sort of sits in there a um, few more switches in there for me fan and that sort of stuff cruise control um, I carry a chair and an umbrella with me everywhere I sort of go. But, um, yeah, I think... Oh, the turbo. So I'll show you a quick sort of video of underneath the, the bonnet. So in there is a, um, basically a turbocharger. Um... It was, I'm pretty sure it's an AXT kit with my own sort of water to uh, air intercooler. Um, the intercooler 
it's good. It probably isn't as efficient as it can be, and that's based on the pump and the plumbing setup that I've got going on there. Um, same thing, the air box is a little bit small, but look, it's, um, it's all been properly tuned, and I've got an aftermarket fuel pressure gauge there, and uh, I've got runs via a uni chip. It's been dynoed a few times. Um, was sitting around 14 PSI for a petrol. Um, I backed it down to about seven to eight, because it was just, it was burning too much fuel. Um, here it it's, runs perfect, um, it tows perfect, so sort of your, your seven, eight PSI is, yeah, as much as I sort of want to go. Um, and like, don't forget, she's a pretty old motor, so you don't want to go too, too crazy. If I had my time over again, I'd still do it, but I would, uh, and as you can see, like I've got my watered air exchanger there with a fan trans -core there with a fan twin batteries and another cradle in the back um, I put a smaller battery auxiliary battery in there when I'm doing my big trips uh, that's a piranha one for a 3F motor and I've just cut and made it work um, going back to the turbo if I had my time over again I'd probably go front mount intercooler um, maybe or just a or plumb up my um, get a better top exchanger and then um, probably plumb it a bit better um, get a bigger air box but look you know it's in there now it's running perfect so I'm not going to change it but yeah so bigger bigger radiator I've done um, otherwise I've changed the head when I did the turbo that was just a me thing more than anything but otherwise it's um yeah it's been super reliable Um, what else? I'm twin locked, so I've got a auto locker in the front and a Harrop E locker in the rear. Um, the front locker I probably wouldn't do again. I've done the 80 series like two wheel drive um, modification that you get from Mark's 4x4 adapters. So it's good when I, when I have these unlocked, then it obviously doesn't matter, and I've got the, the transfer case gear thing as well. So I mean, two-wheel drive doesn't make, doesn't make a difference, but when I have the front hubs locked in, not in four-wheel drive, but just locked, the ratcheting mechanism in the actual, the auto locker, it does clunk and it sounds pretty ordinary. It's just the way it's designed. Um, I don't like traveling with it, like when I was on the, um, the telegraph track up in Cape York, I had these unlocked and I was just using my rear diff lock for pretty much half the track. It was only Nolan's Brook that um, I had to had to sort of engage them. But um, I found it, I couldn't steer with the front auto locker. It, it loves going straight, but going turning, you can do it, but you just, it's fighting you. And over, you know, however long the PDR was, I can't remember uh, the telegraph track, but it gets tiring to, to handle. So hence why I just leave them unlocked and um, I only lock the fronts in when I really need, when I'm really going off road and going doing something I probably shouldn't be driving. Otherwise, the rear locker does not, you know, 80% of what I need. So, um, long range fuel tank in the back. Um, just a, yeah, an upgraded exhaust for the turbo, but um, again, nothing, nothing super flash. Um, what else have I done? Um, diff breather kit yeah that's sort of about it um, again look at my other video for me fold out solar panel um, yeah I think that's that's about it I think I've run out of mods, to, mods on it so um, yeah super reliable love the car I'll never ever ever sell it just maintenance it um, I'm currently building a GU Patrol 4.2 with all the works and jerks. So I'll, when I get that back and I finish it, I'll uh, I'll probably film that too and throw that on, and you'll probably see that on my YouTube channel a little bit more. And this one will just go into retirement. Anyway, guys, that's it. So 